I missed the, um, the start. Oh my God. Um, hello, everyone. How you're doing well, everyone. Um, I know you all had a bit of a slow weekend, I guess, um, if you're a Dungeon Master player specifically. Um, but great to see that you're that you're still all here and um, hope you could use the time for something else instead. And sorry for this. Um, I don't have Pedro with me today, um, but I have a surprise guest. Um, so I'll get him in right away. You can get prepared um, with your questions. Happy Monday, Queen Cristalla. Um, yeah, I hope also hope for a good stream, good good stream here. I guess that there's that there's a lot of questions. How how my weekend was tight tight stressful a little bit of a little bit tense, um, but um, overall yeah surviving. Anyway, um, uh, and well, I saw Bean Tom Bob. Um, you resubbed. Oh my goodness. Um, you've been subscribed for 20 months and um, resub resubscribed for 24? What the hell? Thanks a lot. That's craziness. That's absolute craziness. But yes, exactly. Go 3 1. Um, there you go. Mr. Zuller. Hey guys, how are you doing? Hi. How was your weekend? <laughs> are you asking me or the chat? Uh, the the chat, I know how your weekend went. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, welcome to the stream. And not only that, welcome to Spielworks. Because um, Mr. Zuller here, I don't know, we, we have to establish kind of what I'm supposed to call you on stream, right? Uh, how do you want to be called? Also by people here. Um, but Zuller is working for us now. Um, and I'm not sure who's more excited about that, whether that's me or you. Um, Definitely but, me. <laughs> but we can talk about that. Um, and yeah, maybe a lot of people probably know your screen name. I'm not sure how many people know your face. And I'm not I sure have been on a couple of streams over also. My, my face is not well known, but yeah, my name is kind of known. Um, I have seen Crystal. I have seen Chur. Hi, how are you doing? Um, I'm very happy to be here. And overall, I'm I'm very happy and surprised for all the support people have given me since they announced me as part of the Spielberg, uh, Spielberg's team. A lot of people approach congratulating me. And so I'm, I'm very happy and I'm eager to start working. And overall, deliver cool stuff for you guys. I know the weekend was not the best. We, we were suffering a lot. It was <laughs> your fault. <laughs> I saw a red big bottom and I pressed it. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, yeah, but maybe for, for anyone who uh, who don't know, who doesn't know you, maybe you can just um, say a few wor words about you. And I have a first question to you nonetheless, nonetheless anyway, which I haven't even asked you in private yet. But um, maybe you want to you wanna, uh, tell folks a little bit about yourself and... Um, why why it's so cool to work with no no forget about that last part um just um where you come from what you do who you are just a few words so so people can get to know you better because sure. you'll be around um with a lot of these folks there if they don't know you already right but you'll be around on, on in all kinds of different places and hopefully also very often here so um yeah tell tell people so for sure, I mean, I have been on the WAC space and overall in the crypto space since 2019, 2020. Um, I started working as a moderator for NFT Battle Miners. Afterwards, I started uh, working with Alcor Exchange. We did a lot of cool stuff that I am pretty proud of. And afterwards, what did you, what did you do? What 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 were you responsible for at Alcor? I will say I was a wild card because I started creating a bit of a community. Alcor is already great by itself, but um, there are, there were a lot of things that were not implemented yet. Uh, for example, the Discord, the Twitter had 20 followers, so I took over that. Uh, right now, the Alcor 
all course Twitter has 14k followers. Uh, we did some social events. Later on, I took more of a product approach um, since we were getting some competence with TacoSwap. That's when Avril told us to start delivering unlocked in more. So we deliver Alcor Farms. Uh, later on, we implement the first liquid stake protocol on Wax, which is called uh, LSW. And we also created the Alcor Guild to be a block producer on the Wax blockchain. So we did a lot of stuff that I am pretty proud of. And I just want to start doing more stuff here and overall deliver everything up to the potential that Wombat has. And for the ones to, that do not know me that well, I started to become known because I created a Twitter. I started to post a lot of Wax content, more Polygon content lately, but I still love both chains. And, and yeah, it's funny I, I because this so is how this is how we we've gotten to know each other. Um, <laughs> I first I first came across your name when you were um, actually commenting on on Dungeon Worlds related stuff back in the day. Um, I didn't know if you remembered that. Yeah, I was thinking yeah, about of course it I did. and I was These like, I was criticizing that, and and you re you replied, and I was like, holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> um, I wasn't expecting that. Um, so my my question here is where where does your screen name come from? Um, it's pretty complicated. I mean, I am a I love video games, and so my last Good. name has a, a C on it. So first it was Z rules, like the C is the one that rules, and then I got the Xbox name suggestion that it should be Suler, but. It was just one Z, one L, and one R, and it was like, no, it is kind of weak. So I just added them both, <laughs> a double letter to everything I could find of, and that's how Solar came to mind. All right, that is. I won five hundred cool. wax from Solar on next. Yeah, I always deliver the giveaways. So people sometimes believe that I don't, but I always give them. Uh, another the good thing role... is that on a blockchain, you can. You can comprehend that, right? You can. Yeah, no, I, I always use the it. same wallet. So if I ever get hacked, I will probably cry a lot because I only use one wallet. <clears throat> but well. I try I try to be as careful as possible with it. And I haven't been hacked on Wax yet. <laughs> because there's nothing anyone wants on Wax. <laughs> like, oh, um, no, they stole my NFTs. Good luck trying to sell them in. Um. <clears throat> So there's a question by old Mankey, because you, you, your subtitle says turtle lover. What kind of turtles do you love the most? I love the small ones. I, I used to have a pond. Well, I have a pond, but we used to have some little turtles. I don't know the name of them or the species, but they are those littles that you could buy in any store. And I love them to watch them taking the sun and so on. Unfortunately, uh, there wasn't a happy ending for the turtles. We have some animals here, <laughs> some birds overall, that they took our turtles. So we stopped buying them because they will die anyway. But I, I still love them. And if there will have been a chance to get another one, I would. Maybe maybe there's there will be a way with the next bull market you'll be able to afford... Um, a little a turtle. turtle zoo. A turtle. <clears throat> I've um, seen this guy before. Nice to have another log player around. Yeah. Thank you. Um, this is outrageous, actually. If, if what your village people are saying is true, then um, you got to apologize. <laughs> I got to apologize. I mean, yeah, I wasn't into the Wombat Wallet that much. I actually thought it was great because I always said the Wax Cloud Wallet should have an app similar to Phantom and so on, and then I discovered Wombat. But my problem was that, yeah, I only have one wallet. So <laughs> that's why I didn't never really used it because I had my original wallet. I should migrate the keys though. Yeah, now you can, right? But you know how the, the first discussion that I had with Wax about getting kind of an export to Wombat button in in the wax cloud wallet that was when i was in la uh, at their office in january i believe january 2020 when we discussed this 
right? So I was suggesting, hey, if um, it, because we weren't supporting Wax back then, but we we're like, hey, we would support Wax and we would do this and that, right? And we can um, we can do this if you make it easy for people, if you could make it easy for people to move from Wax Cloud Wallet to Wombat because we're multi-chain anyway, right? And um, so we could make it really easy for people to basically have a non-custodial wallet. Um, and we discussed how, how that could work and so on. And then they shifted their focus to kind of more Wax Cloud Wallet. Originally, this was just, hey, we have it because we we feel like we have to, okay. right, in order to make things easy. And then they started shifting their focus more into, hey, th this is an actual product of ours and we want to kind of build it out. Um, funnily enough, um, Wax Cloud Wallet hasn't been working, or my Cloud Wallet hasn't been working for me. So I, I haven't been able to, to sign any transactions for like, I don't know, two weeks now. I mean, can't yeah. even log in. I don't I, know I what, don't... what's going on. I don't actually like it. They implemented this Cloudflare captcha. And since then, my life has been a nightmare. I actually will start using the Walmart wallet because this captcha is insane. Like, you have to click it. Sometimes I get the puzzle. Sometimes I don't. So, nah. Yeah, right. I had the problem as well. I was getting, like, multiple requests from Cloudflare, right? Cloudflare is this. Um, yeah. Crazy. But, yeah, I, I will start using my Walmart wallet. And I gotta say that, uh, being honest, I downloaded the Wombat app and I was pretty impressed because when I downloaded a while ago, I can see the difference between one or two years ago and right now. I mean, it is a pretty neat product right now. Thank you. But there's always room for improvement and that's why oh, we're sure. here. That's why we're here. Um, and... Um, that's why cool. we're always discussing things with, with people. He says, when you buy one turtle, name him Uwe. That's a good name. Is that some kind of an insider? Uwe, uh, Uwe, have you seen Kung Fu Panda? No. Man, how is it possible? Uwe is the turtle from Kung Fu Panda. But haven't you watched it with your kids? No. You, you should watch it. My kids, um, there is, um, <clears throat> they love watching. There's a German infotainment um, uh, program for kids. It's called Sendung mit der Maus. For anyone from Germany, they will know that. Um, it's like basically a cartoon animated um, a mouse, right? Um, and it's just the mouse show, essentially, right? And they explain all kinds of things. And it's really, really cool. And I used to watch that as a kid. And my kids love that as well. Um, so that's what they mostly watch on their on their iPads. <laughs> um, but we haven't been into kind of movies all that much yet. I mean, for the little one, full full length movies are too long anyway. He can't focus okay. for more than twenty minutes, thirty minutes maybe. Um, uh, he's three, right? So um, that's too long. The 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 big one. I mean, right now we don't even have a TV to watch anything, right? That's good. <laughs> we'll, 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 probably, we'll probably get one. But the only movie that we ever watched was uh, Planet Earth, um, like movie, right? Um, it's a documentary, and um, then also that only halfway. But um, some of the stuff is really too exciting for for my kids yet. So it's it's crazy. Um. Okay, Uwe, Chinese means turtle. Okay. Also, that if means... I say oh, the turtle Uwe, I'm saying just turtle, turtle. Okay, <laughs> that's good to know. So, if um, if the chat, if you have any questions to Zuller, um, or should, shall I call you with your real name on on, on screen, yeah, or do you, you want, do you not want to name. disclose that? Are you like? No, my real name is Santiago. No problem. Okay. Um. Yeah, Planet Earth is really cool, um, and the, the, especially on the 4K TV and stuff, right? That's that's really neat, um, the pictures and stuff. And you also learn something that I like, like as a parent, because you always had a, have a bad conscience about allowing your kids to do stuff, right? Like when they watch TV or whatever, you at least want them to learn something. It's not like they, I mean, they obviously learn something all the time, right? But um, it's it's just. Um, as, as a parent, you always have a, be have a better conscience with allowing your kids to watch stuff for an hour or so. Um, if it's 
entertainment, but also education at the same time, right? So um, that's <laughs> that's why. Um, um, okay, um, Shum Shala, you, sh because let's let's get into these questions. For sure, um, we have some questions um, around. Yeah, sh uh, Shum Shala, because you've been um, you've been uh, kind of following up on this as well. Um, so overall, Wombat was delisted from KuCoin. So if you if you still have Wombat on KuCoin, um, you should be able to withdraw them. I understand that people were having issues with withdrawing them on Polygon. Um, so right now, the only option is to withdraw them on on um, on Ethereum. Then you could bridge them. Um, I mean, the, the problem with Ethereum, obviously, is that the, um, that the fees are quite high. We've been in touch with KuCoin trying to get them to um, to reallow the, the Polygon stuff, the Polygon withdrawals. Um, at this stage, I don't know, maybe it's a kind of money-making thing. I don't know. <laughs> maybe they just want to get more fees from people withdrawing because they're pretty steep. Um, so um, the only the only way you can you can do anything with your Wombat and KuCoin is that if, if you withdraw them, right? And if you want them on on Polygon later on, and you can um, you can bridge them. Um, so that's that. Why it was delisted? So the official answer is like the 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 answer or the the reason that we were given by by KuCoin is that we were listed on no other exchange than than KuCoin, which is technically not correct, which was not correct at that time. That was one of the reasons why we listed on LBank. And um, yeah, now um, that didn't help. So they still went on and delisted Wombat. And um, that's, well, based upon the news of Wombat getting delisted or the anticipation of this after that was moving to special treatment, the price went down, right? So this um, this is clear that this would happen if people get afraid of, um, hey, now this is, this is not working or whatever. So people would sell, and that's what happened. That's why first the price went down, then one would cut the list. Of, but it's obviously tied together. Um, will the season be extended by the time we missed? So um, what happened on the weekend? um on saturday evening i believe uh, evening european time um we had an outage of uh, of of, of uh, the wax node and this lasted until this morning so about 30 36 hours i believe um during that time nobody could actually access dungeon master um there were other things in, in involved and um and affected by this, but I guess the most visible was the dungeon master would not work, right? So nobody could actually play, nobody could do anything because without the nodes, what we don't know is if if you actually have your NFT staked and, and yada yada, right? So we need to we need to actually check uh, against the node. Um, so again, we're really sorry for that. This is um, I don't know. We thought that we had all the issues that that could possibly arise. We already had covered over the last few months. This was a new one, so we haven't had that. And at the same time, this affected other systems as well for, or no, I'm not saying it affected other systems. I'm saying other systems had issues as well at the same time, which were not kind of related, which shouldn't be related, but nonetheless still happened to to be affected so um yeah we're obviously looking into this um so that this doesn't happen we'll increase the team on that end um so that we have more coverage um and faster reaction times if something happens we will well yeah We'll make sure that this specific thing doesn't happen again, but um, obviously we we also need to be able to to fix these issues faster, right? With more people and um, more, yeah, the quicker round trip times. So um, that is what happened. 
Now to the question whether the season will be extended, the answer is no, we won't do that um, because that would cause a lot of trouble with kind of our season scheduling, right? Um, there's, a, there's a lot of um, kind of assumptions that are being made in the, in the code that um, they're all kind of um, the same and um, we could do that, but it would come with a lot of effort. Um, so we, in the past, I think once we extended, no, we didn't extend the season. We extended the, the season break, I believe, um, to two uh, weeks. Um, but yeah, no, we won't extend the season. But the points that were missed, we're going to make up for them, right? Um, so because obviously, um, you. I don't think that anyone received points for yesterday. Um, and uh, because of that, we'll make up for those points that were that were not received yesterday. We're still discussing kind of the exact way, but um, there's a few suggestions and that's that's definitely gonna work. It's gonna be a fair, fair solution. Um, okay, there's... Um, I see a, que oh, no, a question from Daniel Angel 93. Santiago, what do you bring to Wombat? I mean, I think I bring a lot of things. I bring freshness, I bring new ideas. Uh, Adrian always was talking about bringing this Web3 power oriented. Um, so yeah, I have been in the space for over five years. I have a lot of experience in how this works. I am also a gamer at heart, so that's why I also love the Wombat project and everything it represents. So my idea is to create products and usually to keep building towards rewarding gamers and creating engaging experiences. In terms of community, I always think that my, my DMs have always been open and they will remain that way. If you have any suggestion, if you want to talk with me, well, I'm one DM away from it. And overall, I want to listen to the community. I am a part of the community. Only knowing, only be, being a part of the community, you get to understand the problems that the community faces and how you can keep improving the product. So I am a consumer as well. And overall, I just want to work and give the best uh, and provide the best service as possible to you guys. Thank you. Um, all right, a lot of questions about, um, about what happened on the weekend. So let's, um, let's uh, cover those first. Um, does one but for, follow the ITIL process? Uh, no, um, we don't, we haven't implemented any of these frameworks. We have been taking, um, let's say we've been leaning on them um right uh so there's a lot of processes um that are kind of oh where we borrowed from from itil not sure whether it's itil um directly or something else but um there's also the site reliability engineering framework by google which is um mo probably more fitting to a uh, to an organization that runs with um continuous deployment, uh, right? Um, but um, yeah, no, it's not It's not directly the ITIL process. It's typically whenever whenever you, you talk about that, um, this is a very heavyweight framework, ITIL, right? Um, so there's a lot that makes sense in there, but um, it's, it's fairly heavyweight. So if you want to follow this, um, you would, probably want to be a larger corporation. Um, Estini is asking, anything doesn't happen on its own. Was any root cause analysis done? Yes. Um, of course, nothing. Well, certain things actually sometimes happen just by themselves um, without anyone even screwing up, right? Or without, so nodes running out of sync sometimes um how do you how do you manage this how do you well make sure that this doesn't happen right maybe that's a network issue 
maybe that's um, um, an I.O. issue, like a, like a disk issue, whatever. Um, so this, this is what happened as well um, on the weekend on the different node. Um, but we that, for instance, we don't know yet why that happened. Um, but um, yes, we did. We always do root cause analysis um, and then we make sure that this doesn't happen. So we add whatever, what, depending on what it is, we add specific monitoring for this specific case or related cases. Um, if, if we hadn't had that, um, we add a process that somebody would watch that specifically. We add um, whatever people who are responsible for this, right? So we always do these kinds of things. We have a, we have a fairly sophisticated process that, again, that, that's one of the things that we borrowed from ITIL, which is a kind of an incident response um, process where there's always um, kind of the, the thing that happens so that needs to be remedied at once. And then there needs uh, to be um, a retrospective of sorts where we discuss kind of how do we make sure that this doesn't happen again. Also remaining constant improvement, it is also important. I don't know um, how you manage to read the chat without laughing. I, I mean, there are some very intelligent comments that made me laugh. Yeah, I'm I'm always on the more serious side here, so I <laughs> but, but feel free to laugh as much, right? So when when Pedro is here, for instance, um, then um, he's also the the guy for the good mood, and I'm the I'm, I'm the serious person who okay, I'm I, I not allowed to laugh. Point. So feel free to laugh because it's gonna make people people feel lighter about that. To me, that's serious, right? Because so, I'm running a business you... here, so I'm like that serious that um, these kinds of things don't happen. Old Monkey is asking why does Binance prefer pets to other animals? Like, does Binance doesn't like wombats to get listed? Well, I don't know. Maybe they're Binance wombat will loving. Like. Binance will like, uh, but Binance is a is a very particular case, and there. Will, I'll get to that question. Let's let's first um, finish up with a complex sure. of questions around the, what happened on the weekend. Um, would it be possible for Dungeon Master to fall back to using another Wax? Or atomic assets API when your own API is down. Yeah, um, in general, yes. It's just that with the sizing that we have, um, what we don't want to do is, um, well, public nodes are no go because they're rate limited and they're uh, generally the performance is too low. So we don't want to drag down any other nodes, right? Um, with private nodes, we're exploring exactly that kind of um, that kind of solution. The problem there is typically performance, right? Because you would want them to be I'm not saying co-located, but I'm saying not too far away from one another, right? So if we run our our cloud services, um, let's say in Frankfurt, Germany, um, then we would want our um, bare metal servers that we run our nodes on to be located well, not on the other side of the world, at least, right? For latency reasons, and because you transfer a lot of data and you have a lot of requests, um, you try to to, uh, to to do that, right? So um, failing over to a node that is, let's say, in the US or in Australia, that would not be brilliant, right? Um, but that's truly an option. We used to have something, <laughs> we used to actually get the nodes from um, like as a service. And we had exactly that problem. Um, the failover did not work. So we ended up starting to run them by ourselves, right? Um, so yeah, um, we're definitely looking into that as an option as well. We got a few offers from people, hey, you can run against our node. If that's doable, right, um, then we, we might resort to that. Uh, we might resort to that, but um, we would have to test this um, from a performance perspective as well. Um, using Wombat on Polygon is really unreliable uh, in Dungeon Master staking, unstaking, quick swap, waiting until the end of the season to try. Um, please, if that if there is something a specific problem, then I would like to know about it because I don't know what you mean with that. Um, and five minute master is suggesting that there should be a I'm, I'm sorry master pack or expert pack for everyone um how, how about the grandmaster packs grandmaster packs okay um i'll just finish with the questions that i have tagged here and then um, we'll get to the new ones 
uh, can we now get the exact play circulation supply numbers after we do um, the, the, the burn? Yes, uh, we can get them. So it's going to be pretty, I mean, pretty clear what it is, right? For the circulating, circulating supply. So the number of one by tokens that are in circulation times two plus the number of was that's in circulation times 10. There's going to be a few burn tokens. Um, Daniel Angel is um, complaining about the well of wealth. So we had that issue on Friday when in, in the chat with the CEO. Um, we haven't managed to um, to add the remaining things, uh, but we'll do so before the season ends. So keep playing. Because I was pretty sure that we added something, but we apparently didn't. So we forgot about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Teke, um, why would Wombat be listed on more bigger exchanges like Binance when Telegram projects like cats, hamster, dogs can be listed? Um, one of the reasons, not saying the reason, but one of the reasons is that new listings, like new tokens always have an easier time getting listed on exchanges than existing tokens. Why? Because there's more eyeballs, there's typically more trading volume, and that means more money to be made by the exchanges. Right, so they always prefer existing, they always prefer new tokens over existing ones. Um, with Catazen, Hamster Combat, and the, what's the dogs one, the game? Uh, anyway, I don't know. Um, but the, with these tokens, these are, um, I mean, Catazen and Hamster Combat at least, Hamster Combat had over, what, 400 million users allegedly. Um, with these kind of large user numbers, it's a lot easier to get listed, right? Um, because they can expect, the exchanges can then expect a lot of users actually coming on the exchange through that project and, um, yeah, looking, looking for trading. That's why they always require a little bit of size. Um, the bigger, the better, the more, the merrier, um, when it comes to, well, the anticipated market cap, the trading volumes, but also the number of community members and, and users. Um, it seems like issues are happening on the weekends. Is there a thought to have a team in place that are dedicated to weekends? So if an issue comes, uh, it can be fixed quicker. So um, yes and no. So. The problem with a team that's dedicated to the weekends is um, an issue if, if they if they if they only work on the weekends, right? So that's not what you want because they need to be able to fix issues that are related to the um, to the products themselves. So they need to be involved with the products on a, on a kind of regular basis, right? So they they know what what they fix. Um, um, and then if you have people who work basically the weekend shifts and the ones who don't, then it's kind of unfair, right? Um, except if these are people who actually like working the weekends, which um, these people exist, right? So um, the problem is that um, you need to have a lot of redundancy, quote unquote, for every product, right? So you need, if you want to run 24 seven support, let's say, because obviously if you talk about weekends, you also talk about nights. Um, and you need uh, you need a certain minimum amount of people per each product, and then that that is also um, per technical component of each product, right? And the teams, most of the teams are just not big enough to be able to to afford that to basically, yeah, to to be able to manage that. So that's the that's the issue. So we need to find a different solution. But we're discussing this, of course, because we've had a um we've had a problem um to uh, we've had we've yeah we've got particularly do you want to call it unlucky that we've been having these issues on weekends specifically but um we definitely need to do something about it so we're discussing this um Um, apparently the wax OIG couldn't reach the 
contact when the node went down on the weekend. So Wombat blocks is out of the active paid wax block producer for now, right? What's your side of the story? The, our side of the story is that um, the node went down for we don't know which reason yet, right? And um, yeah, we um, we need to fix the issue and then get it back, right? And um, I'm not sure whether we would have been able to do anything, but um, um, yeah, that's it's most unfortunate, right? That we that we weren't able to to get this back up. Um, so there is an issue with uh, equip gear. Um, so we can we can look at that. Maybe um, Santiago can. Um, sure. You can you can check with the team whether there is any problem with that. Uh, did um, you try maybe again? Because I had some users with the same problem, and after a while, they were able to do it again. It seems the node was still catching up. But if the issue um, persists, I will look into it. Will we be able to know how the points not earned for the lost day be distributed before it's distributed. So the idea is that um, we will basically scale up the points, right? So if you had 1% of the actual points, then you'll get 1% of the uh, points that it should be, right? So we'll basically extrapolate or interpolate your, um, your points there. And maybe add some bonus. Um, okay. Then, um, from Daniel Angel, from what I remember, you guys have plenty of EOS NFTs which you don't know how to distribute. Maybe send them instead of some packs or anything like that. Just an idea. So maybe um, that's something we might want to look at if we know people's EOS wallets, which we typically do. Um, Brand 3 UWT, <laughs> oh, sorry, I had that problem uh, last time as well. Um, with this more cell pressure will definitely increase. Do you already have a plan about it? Um, I don't know why, why you would assume that the cell pressure will increase, right? Um, because I mean everything stays the same. Why would why would people sell the new token if the new token is better than the old tokens, right? Um, so I wouldn't know why uh, that would result in more sell pressure if people haven't sold so far. Why would they sell now? Mm -hmm. But even so, that's obviously a, a debate that one might have, might want to have. Um, <clears throat> but um, even so. We're planning, or we're working on a um, on a campaign to accompany the merge, so that there's actually more buy pressure instead of more sell pressure. So that's um, that's how we're gonna like. If there's anything to counter, then um, that's how we plan to counter it. How do I find out about MP for Polygon? The Banshees collections is not in the community old official spreadsheet linked in Discord. I'm not sure what the community slash old official spreadsheet linked in Discord is, to be honest, uh, which one that is. But um, that's a question to Santiago. How do we how do we show? Um, I'm not asking kind of how do we currently do that. That's obviously something that uh, we need to talk about. Um, but uh, how do we want to show um, MPs for Polygon collections? I mean, I don't really like the thing about the spreadsheets. We will need to, I would love to have something in game so users can look it around without really leaving the app. But that's something that we will do with time. I also like the idea of creating a wiki for users. So everyone gets to find all the information that they need about Wombat within only one place. So that's something actually we want the community to help us out. If anyone is interested, of course, with a interest uh, with a cool reward, then let me know. 
because we want to create this wiki as soon as possible. Oh, so you picked up on the wiki idea that was uh, brought up a few weeks ago, and now you are actually doing this. Yeah. Look at that, right? Um, um, then Webby is asking, I'm trying to upgrade gear, but the blend page is showing that I don't have some of my NFTs to upgrade both of these claim today. Will this be fixed soon? So this might be an issue with uh, syncing of the node because the, like earlier today, the node was still syncing. Um, I'll, or we'll try to figure out um, whether that's still the case. Um, if, if, I mean, it should, it should catch up very soon anyway, but um, um, I w it sounds like that might be related. Um, if there is anything in particular that you want to blend, we can also still set it up on on, um, on Nefty temporarily so that you can blend if you let us know what you want to blend. Um, but I guess it should be possible later today or tomorrow. Um, okay, I guess that's... Um, What's the MP for the collections bridge to Polygon? Is it the same MP as on the WAX side? Um, I think they're independent. So um, if there is a collection that's available to be staked both on WAX and on Polygon, then they're generally, I think we're, we're free to set the um, MP separately. And I'm not sure whether it's all the same for all the collections. Um, oh, well, there's a question to you directly, so. Which one? What do you know um, about Dungeon Worlds? Um, that I know that it, it is how I met Adrian at, at first. <laughs> I started critic criticizing the main cell, and that's how Adrian replied. I think it is a very interesting project. It is a, a very ambitious one as well, that I hope we can deliver up to the expectations. If I will be handling that project, uh, we'll see. Uh, we need to check out everything that is going on. You you don't Apart know yet, but yes, you will. <laughs> so yeah, uh, we will be working on it. Don't worry about it. <clears throat> um, Canvas is saying MP needs a proper rehaul, in my opinion. My collection really went down after it was nerfed by more than 90% after people paid a lot of wax for certain NFTs and blends. Um, Yeah, I mean, the nerfs are always a problem, right? Um, but I think that the proper rehaul, that is what's going to happen as soon as we have the creator portal, which Santiago is also working on, right? We have a lot of projects. Yeah. Uh, the creator portal is actually something pretty cool. I love the idea of it. So you just need to make it happen now. I mean, we also have something we're preparing for the next season, hopefully. I won't tell much about it, but it is a cool idea. Kira Nikos is asking, is there a way to get my season pass rewards I can't get due to pre pre persisting issues, inability to do 200 runs in the weekend or the inability to equip gears if it proceeds through the remaining days? Um, persists probably is the word. Um, so I mean, we can we can look at individual cases who um, who um, if there's anyone who has who had um, like massive issues with that, um, we can we can have a look at individual cases and and see whether there's anything we can do, right? But in general, um, yeah, it's it's very bad. This happens towards the end of the season where people were basically relying on the fact that they can still kind of handle this, right? Or get uh, particular um, rewards. Um, but uh, yeah, please reach out if you're not able to make it and um, can have a look whether it's going to be difficult to decide that, right? Whether, oh, you, you would have made it or not. But um, because it was our, uh, our screw up, um, we'll, we'll try and help. Um, Wombat doesn't care about our collections MP. Um, that's actually pretty right, right? We don't um, we're, we don't want to be the ones judging on MP. 
we don't want to be the ones saying, oh, this should have a thousand mining power, right? What we want is to apply the same rules to everyone. It's just that the rules have become so complicated that it's it's really tough, right? And then there's um, a lot of people saying this, a lot of people saying that. There's a lot of opinions about mining powers and so on. We don't want to be the judges of this. We don't want to say this collection is better than this one. And that's why this is getting more mining power, right? Uh, this is a really tough call because um, like, what would we base our decisions on, right? So um, we have formulas for, for, um, for the mining power and this is what we typically apply. And then there's a few exceptions for, <laughs> well, um, good discussion is actually PFPs, right? So, um, that was the idea of, of all of the creator portal that we basically put this entirely in the hands of the, of the creators. So we don't have to be the judges of that anymore. This is not a, this is not a great job, a great job to, to have, right? Because it doesn't gain us anything to, um, to push one collection, um, set this template to a thousand mining powers Set this other template to a hundred mining power. We don't benefit from anything like that. This is just, this just produces negative emotions on, on all sides. Right. Um, so we're, we're not, we're not really gaining anything. So we would like, we really would like to get rid of the job. Um, I'm sorry for the typing sound, guys. I didn't realize it was noisy. I, I mean, at least it is not the, as noisy. Your as keyboard is not as your keyboard is not <laughs> as not as bad as Pedro's keyboard. I I had to ask him, so that's why I didn't notice. <laughs> the other stream, Pedro typing was insane. Um. Maybe we can create a team for this thing. I really don't understand how it's not already a thing. It is a really big part of Wombat Partners collections that are stakeable. Um, that's why we're saying um, the creator portal should be solving this, right? Then the creators can actually choose themselves which uh, templates they want to push and which ones they don't. Because we've had the other, we've had the, the issue the other way around as well, that we set the mining power too high for certain templates and then the creators complained, hey, now um, uh, we, uh, this is too high, can you reduce that? Or can you remove the, the template altogether? We don't want this, these NFTs to be staked, right? So really we, we have no, no issue doing whatever is being asked from us. We don't want to be judging upon um, the, the EMPs. We could have a, a committee, but then we need governance for this. Right, so we need to kind of vote people into this, then they need to do, be able to do their job, right? Um, and that, that, that creates a lot of manual labor um, that uh, will all fall back to us anyway, because then we weren't managing that correctly. We haven't been um, uh, kind of selecting the people properly, right? Um, and if we make that, um, that selection of members of that team, um, being voted through through tokens, then that's going to be um, something like whales uh, can basically vote these people in, so they can basically push their their own MPs. Then we would still have to set up rules for these people so that they can, don't can't act um, outside of kind of what's um, what's what we want for the for the uh, for the game, right? So this is really really complicated. Um, but if we can say hey under certain rules that count that uh, apply for everyone right creators can actually set the mp for or not the mp but the the weight the importance of the templates themselves um then and then we might have kind of a a collection importance whatever uh, factor that um that then can be voted on um th that is um probably a little closer to to what you actually want to do um 
The only collection I remember complaining about their NFT being in the dungeon was Asset Granny and another Telegram one which wanted their NFTs to be burned for the games. Um, well, you don't see what we see. We get that a lot, right? Um, we get, um, or we were getting these requests every month, not this template or uh, can you remove the collection altogether or whatever. Is it possible to check the MPs for the NFTs bridged from Wax to Polygon? I did bridge PR sketch art to Polygon and they have five MP instead of 500. Okay, that's definitely something we can look at. Um, whether that makes sense. The problem sometimes might be that, um, but anyway, that's may maybe again, that's not our problem, but um, um, yeah, we, how are they bridged? All right. Um, but anyway, um, Santiago, maybe you can pick this up and um, check whether there's anything we can do on those collections that have been bridged from Wax to Polygon. Sure. We are, we are already checking it. Mm. Any news about Woofytopia? Santiago, do you want to go to Woofytopia, to NFTopia Woof For edition? Sure. I mean, Consumer Break always, is always working into cool stuff with the NFTopia. Did you, did we buy um, a booth space? I don't know. Um, I wasn't involved, but I know that Olga was was sick uh, last week. So she typically takes care of that. So the best is always to reach out to Olga about these things. Um, I can do it uh, this time around or Santiago can do that. I don't know. I'll check it um, out. Yeah, for sure. Because it was in the week I was getting used to everything. But yeah, we had to buy a uh, a booth for us to be on there. But I think there is plenty of space right now, so we can still apply if we didn't. Yeah, I mean, I met Consumer Break when he was creating the app at first. So yeah, he, he's great. He's a very positive guy. I like him a lot. Let's hope that at some point this will have, um, this will have, um an impact on wax at some point um i, I would love it to see like cross chain like having polygon having solana in that way we attract all the solana and polygon users and we expose them to a little bit of what is wax well that was the idea behind uh, woofy to begin with right but yeah i'm not sure whether this has actually drawn a lot of people from solana to wax yeah, maybe, I mean, maybe it's done that the other way. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is difficult to not pay attention to Solana considering all the noisy people they are and everything they are building. So it it's just so much easier to make around. money on, on Solana than on Wax, right? As a, as a kind of crypto trader, speculator, whatever. Crypto yeah, DJ, mean, if you want to call them that. It once happened to me that I bought a meme coin. I saw it down like 70% and it was like, oh, fuck it. I forgot about it. I checked the other day and it was at, uh, I did a 10x. We, and I didn't have any idea about the token and so on. So really Solana is something different. Solana's like the, the meme coin space there is ridiculous. Um, I, ducked, I ducked into that at, at some point. I also made like 70x with one coin on one day, right? And sold that, but then you get racked on so many coins in all kinds of different ways. Like seven, 70, <laughs> basically you invest in 70 coins. One of them maybe makes 70x and the rest get racked in entirely. <laughs> Zero x, uh, yeah. So it's like, um, it's just, it's like gambling, essentially. It's it, fun. It's, gambling. It's, it's, it's fun, but it's gambling. I mean, people have to work their backs into promoting their token and getting people to buy and so on. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of the meme coin meta, but it is what it is. I think if if it helps the cause, meaning bringing people into well certain communities and thereby also into certain uh, blockchain economies, then they are really cool. I mean, um, we spoke about it last week here as well, 
that these are that there are these uh, one byte community meme coins that are being set up um that's unfortunately not not going as smooth as um at least i had hoped so i'll, I'll try to get them there so, uh, some some extra support but i love the janus uh, meme coin the janus whatever community coin right sqj um so um Agenis has obviously been a part of our community for a long time as well and it's great to have a coin that's related to the to her right and that just this is exactly what coins like what the, what tokens and coins and meme coins whatever you want to call them what they're for what they can can do very effectively is basically form these communities and help them um to to be coherent right even if that's on a very low level but if, if you're in early on these then you can well a make a lot of money but maybe that's it's not about that it's about expressing your support for someone or, or a certain or a certain I, I like to say it like aspect. it is tokenizing attention which is something pretty difficult to do and people realize it when they have these tokens because they get into the spotlight pretty easily but the same way they get into the spotlight they are forgotten by people oh yes so it's constant work right um so it's, but also the volatility is crazy, right? If, if some of these people who got in on it early, if they start selling, then there's, that has a massive price impact because no matter how, um, how much liquidity you put in early or whatever, um, there's not going to be enough liquidity for, for these people to actually, when they start dumping their token. So even something like, um, I've been following, uh, mother by Iggy Azalea, <laughs> right? And, um, that's a hundred million, give or take, right? Uh, market cap coin, but the volatility is so crazy, right? That on it's, one, insane. it's 20, 30 percent up, it's 20, 30 percent down in a day. It's, this is crazy, right? So, um, I don't even know how that, like, at such a, at such a point where you, you should have such a healthy token economy with a hundred million market cap, um, th that that should not be happening. Um, I mean, she also knows how to call attention pretty well, though. No? Sorry? That Iggy also knows how to call attention and be on the spotlight pretty easily. I mean, if you're if you're a world-known artist, then that makes it easier, right? Um, but at the same time, uh, she also did um, like the, the this casino thing, right? And that, so, so there's there's work behind that that is actually being done so that people can 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 build up a, um, a vision of where this is going to go. Um, I don't like how Sol liquidity farms work. I prefer how Wax does it. Um, cool. Interesting. Okay. I would I, I would like to dig a little bit deeper on this old manky if you if you don't mind. Like, what do what do you not mind not not like about um, the Solana liquidity farms? Um, but what do you like about the wax farm specifically? Um, just curious about kind of what it really is. Um, so there were two questions. So CapTop, um, yes, you were late. <laughs> Can we have a quick, quick recap? I suggest that uh, you would watch the real life, the, the video on demand um, so that, uh, because I don't want to repeat that. Maybe maybe later if there's more people coming coming in late um as no one made a run yeah there will be a compensation for this so right now our thinking is around basically just interpolating your um uh, your points for for this for these days where they were off i mean the the days where runs were made should be mostly fine um but the sunday obviously where no one made made, made a run it's problematic because no one got any points um So yeah, um, does Speedworks pay for publicity on Facebook, YouTube, X, whatever? Um, that's a like what what does what does it mean? <laughs> publicity on Facebook, YouTube, uh, Twitter. If you um, pay for miners, or so. so yeah, so there's for instance there's social mining, right? Um, that's cool. We do that. Um, but what does um, like publicity has a lot of meanings here, right? 
Um, so there's multiple ways of um, on, on how you can do that. So there's um, PR companies, right? So straight up um, public relations where it's about um, how do you get into certain publications? This is not what you're talking about here, right? Because you're talking Facebook, YouTube, but this is what publicity would typically um, uh, be called, uh, like what, what that would typically mean if you talk about publicity, there would typically be um, being in outlets like Cointelegraph, Coindesk, whatever, and um, get get in there through, let's say, a PR agency, right? Um, or you can run it yourself as well. Then there's um, um, influencers and KOLs and stuff who basically post about you, talk about you on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, whatever. Um, so that's a, but that's totally separate typically. And sometimes the same agencies offer the same service, uh, well, both services. Um, but um, sometimes you basically run one thing yourself and the other you um, are, are like you hand over to an agency, whatever. Um, whatever it is, right? Um, there's multiple ways of doing this. Um, you have to combine all of them. Right, that's the that's what you need to do, and then you need to figure out what the best way is. You can't just rely on one method to do stuff. You need to combine them, and you need to strategize over that. So um, that's what we're trying to do. I mean, we can already always create campaigns and so on, as Daniel is suggesting. The problem right now is that our onboarding is not the best right now. For example. I will feel more, more confident into doing this kind of stuff once we have a better onboarding, for example, having the wiki. As I was trying to learn the game during the, these last few weeks, it was kind of messy trying to go from one link to another to searching information in a lot of places. So we need to have a very easy onboarding in order for this to be effective and create some conversion, which is the metrics you use for these kind of campaigns. Um, when it comes to Dungeon Master, um, yes, but I mean, Dungeon Master is a very particular project uh, product, as in it's uh, it's tied to Wax, right? So you need a Wax account, you need to kind of understand Wax in order to be able to actually use it, right? And um, from a like publicity point of view, um, Wax is difficult, right? I mean, everyone knows that, and every, everyone agrees on that. It's it's more difficult for for anything wax based to catch on in the public than for anything Solana or Polygon or Base or Ethereum or whatever related, right? So um, that's that's one thing. The, the, the next thing is that, um, yes, it is a game that if you want to master, that's pretty hard, right? So you need a lot of information, a lot of learning, a very steep learning curve when it comes to yeah, all the different aspects of it, a lot of different links that you need. Yes, that, this is where the wiki is going to help, right? Um, but there is also the point where onboarding through a wiki is also not the simplest thing, right? Because people don't like reading up on things that they don't know, know nothing about. So um, it would be cool to have something more interactive or something that's, yeah, easier to understand, mm -hmm. but faster to consume than reading through a wiki, right? Um, so if anyone wants to produce some content um, here, specifically for newbies, which we can link to from our from our community uh, or from Discord or wherever, where it's hey, this is re this is a really good explanation for uh, explanation video for new new starters, but then this probably will have to be kept up to date because then things are change things change over time and so on, but um, that would be really cool and that's definitely something. I want to say the word because uh, I haven't spoken to um, to Olga about it. Like, what's that, what's going to happen with the uh, one bounties? Um, but that would totally be worth a one bounty. Right. Um, oh, one one little update. It seems that the issue that users were not able to see their NFTs or equip them it will be solved in, in approximately one hour and a half. So thank you guys for your patience and we're bringing solutions as we are speaking. That's why I was typing so fast and so on. I was supposed to make 5,000 clan karma points for next season. How will I be compensated for the karma loss? Um, we look into karma as well. That should be rather easy to, to compensate for. 
So Daniel Angel, um, you've been uh, talking about ads here uh, with Wombat on social media. PR company will be crazy expensive, but some ads I think will be cheaper and a good ad that get attention of a lot of people. Um, it's funny that you're saying that because um, the rates for PR companies are pretty much the same. Or they're pretty much, um, how do you say, they're predictable, right? Um, if you want to talk about ads and ad creatives, right? This is really tough because um, you can spend hundreds of thousands, you can also spend millions, but the, even like, let's just talk about something rather kind of straightforward, right? Um, you can spend a five or six figure budget on creating an ad um an ad creative just a just a video let's say right um uh, for an ad and but then you don't know how that how that will perform right so you would also have to spend a budget a significant budget in order to understand whether it actually works or not right and then if, if it doesn't work well then you might have a problem you might realize that you have a problem with um with uh, targeting or maybe with the creative so you maybe the creative was wrong right so it, this is really complicated it's not as easy as that it's actually uh, if you want to do it right one ad so imagine the uh, <laughs> the crypto.com ad with matt damon right there was a massive budget for the ad it was a very expensive ad to make i don't know what the budget was but um, but then they also ran massive budgets to actually run it, right? Um, so I would say a PR company would be a lot cheaper than ad, uh, like running like super big ad campaigns. And plus we do run ad campaigns, right? We do run them. Um, on Google, we used, uh, we, we tried um, Twitter, uh, we tried YouTube. YouTube, we do actually. We tried um, Unity, we tried Facebook, we tried all kinds of things actually. TikTok, right? So a lot of platforms we tried already, and there isn't that they have very very different outcomes for. They've had different, very different outcomes for us. Mm. Robot is uh, saying, hey, did you already contact the creators of the game Dogami? It is a Web3 game about dog races. The dogs are NFTs on Polygon. They started on Tezos, but there is a bridge. Would be a good fit for one play, I guess. Um, that sounds awfully familiar. Um, <laughs> I think I once met somebody from Dogami, but maybe that would, I'm just confusing it because it's similar, a name that's similar to something else. But um if i dig in my contacts i'll probably find somebody so um i might have ignored it because if it was if it used to be um tasers then we might have just ignored it because we simply have no ties mm -hmm. into the tasers ecosystem we're not supporting tasers but if it's now um if there's a bridge to polygon yeah You have to pay Sol to mint an NFT that represents your liquidity. But on Wax, you have to pay um, RAM to mint. Uh, well, it's not an NFT, I believe. No, uh, not really. I mean, it? if it is a token position, then previously Alcor B1 used as minting a new token that represents your liquidity liquidity position. Now, with the introduction of concentrated liquidity, there is no longer a token that represents a liquidity position. So it's just a table in the smart contract. It's just a table in the smart, yeah, smart contract. And actually, April was looking into migrate, I mean, creating support of Alcor to Solana. The problem is that, as Monkey said, it, it is very difficult to have a system as efficient as the one that Alcor has on Solana and costly. Dankes Mikas, um, this one, Mad, what's up with you? You wanted to sort that. Um, 
Have you thought of about a collab with gaming? Gaming is a very interesting project. They started out as an esports organization. Uh, they are actually the most famous esports uh, organization along with OG for Dota 2. And they right now have their chain. So their chain has not been doing great, but they are definitely a, a very interesting project that we could think about a collab. I also like the root network. So we have a lot of I, I, we have a lot of eyes in several projects, and the thing will be to look for the best way to collab between each other and not really collab for the sake of collabing, but collabing and actually providing value for each other. That's the biggest difficulty to actually provide value, right? Yeah, because people just love to collab, but they spend time, they spend resources into doing these collabs, but actually they are not very beneficial for each of them. Yeah, so um, we're in touch with Gaiman. And we're um, talking to them about what we can actually do together. So, yes. Um, so, Mad, about the um, Dengas McGaz request, the ticket here um, about the card issue and the refund that we want, that we, um, that we promised to Dengas McGaz. So, that you should please, 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 please look into this. Um, so um, there was a question regarding, it was repeated here a few times, that's why I would put it out, regarding the determine the MP of the NFTs. Um, and there was a bit of a back and forth about this. Um, so how do you, how how do we determine the MP of the NFTs? So what we do is we use the maximum supply of a of an NFT of a template, right? And then there's a formula that's kind of a function of the maximum supply of the of the template. Um, that basically determines uh, what its base mining power is, right? So it's not linear formula, formula. Um, and I can't tell you from the top of my head. It's something like, hey, if this, if this is one, then it's this. If this is bigger than three, then it's this. If this is bigger than five, then it's this. If this is bigger than fifteen, it's this. Right. So it's so there's kind of a, a stepwise function um, to um, determine kind of the base mining power, and then there's a few functions on top of that there's a, a collection multiplier um and then there's a um a rounding um a rounding method that's that's around this that's wrap, that wraps this right um so that's basically the basic function and what we mean with max supply is um, typically the if the template is locked then obviously there is a maximum supply if there if the templates are not locked then there's nothing we can do in terms of MP because we've had it so often that um, then these uh, templates get over minted um, if it's not if, it, if the template is not locked. So we can only work with um, the the information that we have. Right? Um, we have about seventy thousand templates that are stakeable. So we cannot basically. Please mute yourself when you type. <laughs> Jago. Sorry, um, I'm so sorry. I so we cannot we, we cannot basically update all these or, or look at all these um, mining powers individually all the time, right? It's about like I said, about seventy thousand stakeable templates. Um, so we use this function for all of them, all of the third party for all of the community uh, collections. The same function is used. Then we have the, the possibility. To overwrite them with a certain value, if there's a particular reason, for instance, yeah, that's a PFP, right? Um, whatever um, these kinds of things, and um, then we have some of the old collections that got added early on. They were they they used to use a different formula, which was not based on the maximum supply, but on the current supply. And this was the issue back then. Um, that we didn't think of 
these cases where um, templates get overminted just because they had a high mining power and so on, right? So, but that's the kind of basis. So that's being applied to all the collections. Um, lowest MP should be like 50 MP, but then, no, I don't agree with this. Um, I, um, I think it should be, um, it should be zero or one or five or something really low, actually. The idea is also that you can still, even if you stake just a five MP um, mining, a five MP um, NFT, you still get the resources from it, right? Or you still can use that for a well of wealth and so on. So there should be cheap ones that have very low MP. If we set the um, the MP for anything that has five, five MP now to 50 MP, that would not improve anything, I, I believe. Um, suggestion for the last Sunday, you could for each leak divide the Wombat payout for the missing day in three equal parts for the remaining three days and add the two those days pool. Um, would have to think about that. That's something for Santiago. Yep. Like how we actually do that. <laughs> what would be the, the, the point to give an NFT zero MP? That it's not stakeable essentially, right? Um, so what I'm saying is that if you, if you start at 50, then there should be a dis distinction, right? A 50, you, ca you can't have like, um, let's say a basic shovel from Alien Worlds that has what, 3 million mints or whatever. You can't have that have 50 MP, right? Because anyone can basically buy that at, at no cost. So uh, that should have zero MP, right? That should not be stakeable or it should have the bare minimum um, so that we don't have um, so we don't have that, that kind of problem. Um, I mean, it's it's a fascinating discussion about MP because it's clear that um, at some point MP will inflate, right? Um, and I don't necessarily think that's a problem so long as it's fair, right? Um, so long as is kind of the things that you that are, yeah. So as so, so long as the, the, the rules are consistent. Um, and the and the balance between the MPs, right? It doesn't really matter whether they go up and they, but they typically would go up, right? Because we don't generally reduce them. We like we try to avoid reducing them. Why is that? Because we get a shitstorm every any time we do that, right? But obviously, if you keep one constant and increase all others by a factor of two, then it's like having this one template basically nerfed by 50%. Um, and that's not what we're doing, right? It's just that this is this is one way of basically getting rid of pro problematic um, templates where okay, it doesn't matter at some point whether this is um, fairly high MP because um, nobody quote unquote cares, right? Um, A, it may, may have become cheap or um, everyone already has everything full with 50 MP um, NFTs. So now the the next stage is yeah okay you need to upgrade all of your 50 MP NFTs to 100 right and that, that that's naturally how how there's uh, there's an inflation in this. Yes, and some packs would have four, five, 400 MP. Some packs would have 50 MP right. Um, Exactly, right? Maybe we should have a look at the EOS collections like Wombat Rams, One Play Extra, um, because they're not minted anymore. Yes, we will do that. We will have to have a look at them and then see whether we rebalance them. And that's for that's for Webby, right? Webby is a specific case, obviously. Um, but um, especially on, on Wax, I guess, um, there if, if, if you're that stacked, Right with high MP stuff, then um, you, it's really hard to convince Webby to buy something 
new and upgrade. <laughs> See, I, I take an NFT with zero MP if it has gold as material. Um, but yeah, that, that's, I mean, with zero MP, I actually meant it's not stakeable, right? Because yes, uh, an NFT with zero MP as it currently stands would still mine. Um, still mine Is there an MP. NFT with zero MP? No, I don't think so. I think we we once did that in order to kind of remove something, and then we didn't want to remove it during the season, but we basically set the MP to zero. Um, okay. But um, I think we removed it eventually. Mm. Let's have a fun season with inverted MP values. What do you think about that, Webby? With inverted MP values? <laughs> That's totally not going to work. Ibru, um, Ibru is bringing up something. Do you track maximal theoretical MP if all NFTs with MP were staked? Total staked MP, total active MP. If you track, track such numbers, what are they at the current, current moment? Um, yeah, that's the problem is the word active in your parenthesis there, right? Um, there's no point in track well first of all there isn't a lot of point in in tracking mp all together for all the players right kind of as a as a um sum of all right because we have so many players who still have nft staked we have millions and millions of nft staked in dungeon master and if people aren't playing anymore okay now my kids are home you can probably hear that <laughs> um there's probably something the little one wanted but isn't getting. So he's upset. Um, <laughs> and he's a drama queen. Um, but the, the theoretical uh, or total staked MP, um, that's not very relevant because there's going to be a lot of MP that's, uh, that's out there. For us, it's more important how does MP relate between individual players, right? So how much MP does Webby have staked, for instance, and what are the options for a player like Webby to replace, to upgrade, right? But to us, that's much more relevant. Um, so no, we don't We don't generally look at kind of the total numbers of MP or whatever. Um, but what we do, it's not, it's not the most, it doesn't feel like the most relevant number. We can obviously, we can get that out uh, at any point in time, but. I can't, I can't remember a single time wondering, hey, how much total MP do we have staked? It's, it would be a fun metric, just, I mean, for fun, for sure. Hmm. Yeah, what happened to the idea of decay of things that are commonly staked becoming worth less, more worth, worth, yeah, or whatever. Worth less or le have less MP to encourage more diverse staking. Um, yeah, that's that, that. That was an idea that we had, um, where, where we said we were thinking about implementing this if things go out of hand. But that was mostly about um, about the high level high-end stakers, right, rather than the low-end stakers. With low-end stakers, it doesn't really matter, right? You're bringing up the example of waste in Polygon, like the waste NFTs from, um, what's this, um, ah, what's this collection? I I know, but I forgot. Um, the space game, right? Um, sorry. Um, and, um, but that there doesn't really matter because you can very, very easily swap them out for something else with low mining power. Right. So this doesn't that doesn't gain you a lot. So we would we would this is just a okay, that's that's an inconvenience. Um but um it would be better if we uh, or it would be more relevant if that was for um for large stakers, right? That they stake one hundred if the waste is like a ten thousand MP, then this would be a problem, right? So, um, but yeah, no, I don't think we have a we have a massive issue with that. So uh, that's why we didn't pursue that any further so far. Uh, 
Um, what if we did a season that gave out MP based on an RNG? I mean, these kinds of things would definitely mess up the entire economy for Dungeon Master, right? And actually, Santiago has a thing that, um, like a Santiago signature thing feature. We can still not talk about it. Yeah. Uh, that you want to make. Um, that is kind of the first thing. Um, so that might be. It might have a twist of this, not really, but a twist of this. And um, I wonder how that's going to mess up the, <laughs> the entire it, economy. It will be interesting, for sure. Um, so yeah, the, we we said that, yes, there will be a compensation for people not getting their, um, their points, A. And then there's also others, uh, other issues um, like materials or resources um there's um karma there's um well um the nft is in the chest right we can't really compensate anyone or everyone one to one but we can do kind of uh okay this is what we do um and there will be an announcement it's today it's a bit early um because we uh, we just fixed the issue today, right? Um, but there will be a, a decision and um, there will definitely be a compensation at the end of the season. So sounds like you work for Webby. Me? I work for all of you. I don't know about you, Santiago. Who do you work for? Uh, for Webby? No, I'm... <laughs> For spill works and for all of you guys. Um, Prime Rogue Inc. Is there any reason there was no proactive communication via Twitter during the downtime? That is something that we need to talk to Pedro about. Um, were engineers actually working on the issue over the weekend? Yes, but there are certain people who can do something about it and others who can't. So. Um, there were people working on, on it on the weekend. Um, why did we not hear from the new head of product about this as it was ongoing, given your commitment to transparency? Okay. Um, well, first of all, hi, Prime. It's nice to see you again. Um, I think I, I was around in the Discord channel answering all the questions. I think I, I, I agree that we should have announced it on Twitter. We should have actually given more answers to users, but as long as we have them at the moment during the Saturday and Sunday, we didn't really have all the information to provide to you guys on the expected return of all the services. So it's really more a thing of we cannot be talking and about speculation. Um, we need to provide you the information as long as we have it and we're sure that it is true. So. And yeah, in terms of communication, I think we have to let it to the communication team, do the announcements as Pedro did, as Matt did. And definitely we should have announced it on Twitter. And that's something that now that we do the post-mortem, we need to improve. I hope that it doesn't happen again, but yeah, I agree with everything you said. Um, I wanted to... Wanted to get into this um, by Misty. Low versus high end sounds elitist. Aren't all players equal? Uh, no, not all players are equal. Uh, but that doesn't. That that's not my point here. Um, I was just. This was not a, um, a quality or an importance description. This was merely um, a categorization of people of players, not of people. The people. The people are all equal, right? Players are not because they they have totally different strategies and they are impacted by totally different things. But that's exactly why I was saying I was just categorizing player types into people who have low mining power. No, sorry, not people. To players into accounts that have low mining power and high mining power um, because there's totally different impacts on this. And I brew um, on, on like when we make decisions, they impact. Um, players in totally different ways, right? And um, uh, the impact on low end or um, 
low MP players, if we Im implemented something like that, would be very minuscule. Whereas um, high MP players would be that would be significant or potentially significant, right? That's all, that was all that I was saying. I wasn't meaning to say um, there's certain. Um, or I didn't, we didn't want to make it sound elitist, but there is definitely differences, right? And there was um, there was a bit of a comment there, but I wanted to react to that nonetheless. Um, Ibru is replying to to say that um, MP total MP does not matter is not correct because if more supply is out there, then simple demands uh, supply demand theory will tell you that prices per unit goes down. That is correct. So it can be very relevant for players collectors even more relevant um, maybe know how much supply you have in different tiers um more so seeing how these numbers change over time um i know i've been striking this drum in the past it's still relevant in my opinion um but are you talking about the supply because the, the problem with the supply is really what we don't know and what we can't know is how many of these nfts are bound in accounts will never come back right so just because they're um staked to a player who's not playing actively anymore doesn't mean that they're gone but how do you treat those that that to me is the biggest issue right um so confettis for instance confettis are a great example right there's a lot of confettis staked most of the confettis are staked so how do you go about um how do you calculate the supply for confetti, the actual supply, right? It's really hard, right? Um, so we can do this, but then um, what we need to look at is more like um, if, the, if the rules are the same, right? We can obviously always adjust the rules, but if the rules are the same for all, uh, for, all, um, um, for all NFTs, for all collections, then the pure aspect of price per mining power right that is totally arbitraged and that's something that we've, we've been discussing a lot um since Santiago joined right that there is a total arbitrage between everything um and between all the all the assets so there is no um there is basically no no arbitrage opportunities anymore right because this is um price per per mp will typically be very equal unless there's a, an event, a special event, like there's an overminting of a particular NFT or there's some extra demand for another NFT, right? Because we are not the ones um, being responsible for, <laughs> for NFT economies that are not ours, right? And we don't want to be. This is, this is very important to understand that um, if we set a mining power of 500 to something and there is a big change in, in that something, in the template of the creator, then how are, how are we supposed to react to that? We need to react to that, but we, we don't know. We can't anticipate that for hundreds of collections and tens of thousands of, of, um, of templates. But I'm, I'm, I'm curious to hear your, your opinion on that, Sinjo. I wasn't that much into the comments. I was replying to Prime Row. So okay. I can't really, I can really provide a, a better insight on that. Um... I need a confetti. Um, I mean, I mean, uh, we, it, it was fun to do the spreadsheet, a spreadsheet with it, and checking all the arbitrage that is around. Because as you said, it seems like an optimized system by itself. So uh, if you don't know people, um, once I join, since I am trying to get to know everything, so Adrian was telling me a lot uh, about all the combination plans and so on. So we actually had to make a spreadsheet with all the Atomic Hub APIs so we can check on the prices of the NFTs, what, what are they being used for, the percentage of the ones that are being mined and the ones that are being burned. And so we can take decisions based on data for it, which is awesome. I mean, I love, I love it. It is also part of game theory to be able to check how users actually they create this own arbitrage system for all this combination. Can I get that spreadsheet? <laughs> I don't know if you will be down to make it public, Adrian. There's no internal information. Like if, if there's no internal information on there, I don't mind making this public, right? Um, I, I will have to make it 
more appealing just, to the eye, but yes. I mean, yeah, no, but there's, it's essentially just using public information, right? Uh, where there's a number of mints, then a number of burns. Um, what it doesn't have is how many how many of them are staked to uh, to Wombat Master, right? I, um, I was trying to look for it, and yeah. Um, and then it, it uses it uses the price um, from the Atomic Market API and um, yeah, uh, the, like the floor price, or I don't know which price actually. Um, and um, yeah, that it just yeah, why why not make it public, right? Um, we can it's, charge people for it. No, I'm um, it's a wonderful start for. Um, so there's a way. Maybe we can talk about that for a second. Um, there's a way uh, how you can calculate the, um, the value of the resources that you mine as well, right? And I mean, every everyone can get to that themselves if, if you just think about that, right? Um, but that's also what we use, right? Because um, we know that if, for instance, a particular NFT, um, a particular Wombatium specifically, that um, has a cost of, let's say, a dollar, can be obtained uh, much cheaper in the shop, right? Then this will happen, and then the price of that of that NFT will not be a dollar anymore. That's what we that's what we mean with arbitrage, right? So um, typically, we assume that the <laughs> that the price for something is a fair price because there is so much. Typically, there is so much trading and supply going on. Um, that if, um, if an NFT could be obtained cheaper elsewhere, then this would be the actual price. Obviously, plus minus a few percent um, because of the trading fees and the whatever fees that you might have um, for, for NFTs. But um, that's um, that's very interesting. And that's very, I think, I, that's what I really, really love about, um, well, this game, this account, game economy, the community um, uh, playing this game. Um, but also, I mean, that probably goes for wax uh, at a, at a grander, in a grander scheme of things that there is, um, because of the blends and so on, right, there's a lot of arbitrage possibilities generally, and they, they always get, they get seized. So. Um. NFT dealer question the difference between MP is so high most players have no reason to mm, whatever the three asterisks mean uh, we have any plans on fixing this ongoing problem honestly is pushing even me away as you know I love the game most um, you mean the difference between the MP um, in between players or the difference in MP between collections that is what i don't get from your question so we can if you would mind i wouldn't mind clarifying and we can answer pro properly um yeah that that is what's not in that sheet uh goal three one um is what are all the ways of obtaining a particular um a particular one and uh we it, that should go in the week yeah, it is a work in progress. <laughs> Actually, I wasn't able to use the spreadsheet this weekend because of the API's downtime. Well, um, <laughs> made a machine learning model, simple linear regression. I mean, that obviously is pro probably not doing the trick. So um, simple. Yeah you need you need something better right calculated the price for the materials from the shop costs and market values and it turned out that coal is worth zero it can obviously not be it's low but it's not zero your village people is asking something very important very very important that to you yeah messi or ronaldo I mean, when I was a child, I liked a lot Messi. Now that I am a grown a, a grown man, I realized that Cristiano Ronaldo is the best player of all time. There's no doubt about it. Oh my God. Oh. 
Matt is going to be so happy about this. El Comandante. Um, that is the correct answer. I, I, I cry. I, I am glad that everyone loves Cristiano Ronaldo. Well, <laughs> people that Paichi, aka Pedro, is Portuguese. So what else would you say? Uh, you just called Messi fans children. I mean, um, so true. But it, I, I mean, think when that's... I was a child, it was the period in which Barca, Barcelona was winning everything. So yeah, it is normal to be as a kid a fan of the team that is winning everything. Um, I wanted to get back on the on the question regarding uh, <laughs> or that NFT dealer uh, posted NFTs in general. So, um, I mean, again, I don't want to put too much emphasis on the uh, on the um, creator portal, but that is something that should hopefully solve that if we get it balanced right. That's going to be difficult, right? Um, but uh, there's going to be amendments that we can make. I do agree, though, that um, because we haven't revisited the form, this formula that I was talking about er earlier, right? We haven't revisited that basically ever, and this is—it's not great anymore. It's, it probably never was great, but it was a lot more accurate when we just had how many collections did we have in the beginning? That was just a handful, right? External collections, maybe ten or so. Um, but now we have hundreds, so um, it's it's um, yeah, it's not great. It's definitely not great. But the problem is, if we changed it now, this would impact up to seventy thousand templates with unknown consequences, right? So we <laughs> this would get out of control really, really quickly, aka. Um, why is this now this MP, right? And these kinds of questions. So we would love to, to adjust that, but we are just afraid of touching it um, because we don't know where this would lead, right? Um, so, uh, so next one for you, Pele or Maradona? Um, that one is a hard one actually uh i will say maradona wow yeah people i i mean yeah maradona i i like the way he played more than what i saw from play which i didn't so much for you supporting manchester united and arsenal means you need to be mentally stable i mean i agree with it manchester united is it is just sad to be a fan. And Arsenal, at least with Arteta right now, you have some faith. <laughs> um, so Webby, Webby still remembers the early days when we had apparently nine collections. Um, all right. I hope we had uh, most of the stuff covered. Uh, Escher and Dried um, has been asking this. Have you ever thought of moving candies to the shop, make them to tradable NFTs? NFT? Um, yes, and the answer is no, because um, if that was an NFT, then people could have more, right? And the whole idea is that the more you have every day, the more expensive they become. So um, you spend more Wombat tokens on those, and that should benefit everyone, right? So no, we we don't think that we, moving them to the shop will actually do any good. I also don't like the idea of signing transaction, uh, transactions for everything. It is a game, not, and the game shouldn't be about signing transaction, uh, transactions each time. Well, that is something that could be solved, right? Um, uh, you could you... basically redeem them in bulk or whatever, right? Um, but um, this is not how th this, this works economically, right? And then people like, I don't want to say Webby all the time. People like Bean Town Bob would actually <laughs> just buy up cheap candies from everybody else um, and um, just use them. Um, can we go back to random MP buffs here and there? Just one or two. That was a good thing hunting for NFTs. That is something that I would love to do. Um, the only thing that we need to make sure is that we 
Um, so what I would like to do is have a seasonal effect, right? So we say, hey, there's a surprise collection that has double MP this next season, right? Maybe we'll actually do that for next season. The only thing that I would like to make sure um, is that these are marked so that you know, right? Um, that it's just for that next season, not forever, mm -hmm. right? Um, because otherwise people will start making, um, let's call them investment choices. Um, and either, yes, um, we can, um, uh, we can, it might be a surprise thing and, um, courtesy of Santiago, for instance, who decides on uh, who that is, I like right? the idea. or we make a vote. We can, we, we love votes in general, right? So um, the community, community could nominate them and we could make a vote. I, I like the idea of the top five would get run randomly and then we set up a stream so we make sure that nothing is rigged and so on. The unknown is amazing. Exciting. Exciting. <laughs> exciting. Exciting. That's what NFT dealer meant, I guess. Um, voting means the whales decide. But then, if we if we vote and then we randomize, right? Um, so like uh, as your village, I like that idea. Why, why don't why don't why don't we try this for next season? So we'll set up a vote for ten collections for, by 10 collections that can be nominated or whatever, um, and then we just do it do that. And the top five will be draw like they, we'll draw two randomly from the top five collections or something like that. So hey, I like it. Sure. Okay, we're almost two hours in. It's about time for a, a round of um, twitchy tides. Same way as Eucalyptus and Mushroom. I was actually wondering about it. Um, as I oh, process it. Um, confetti. <laughs> we can't give out confettis. I mean, we can. <laughs> for the digits. Um, so um, now I need to to check whether we actually still have those um, wood metals, metals, not metals. W what is a wood metal? So we still mm -hmm. have a lot of these party wood metal metals. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> So we will be handing out a lot. So we, let's do some twitchy tight sessions here. Um, let's do whatever, two rounds. Um, so um, we can hand out a bunch of these medals that we created to celebrate season 20. And um, yes, I know a lot of you, it's not have been bringing this up it's not 20th season it's actually technically the 21st season so um we're here but um we'll be handing out let's say to the top 20 players each each of the top 20 players will get a medal. wood medal and whoever uses a wombat skin gets another or also gets one. Let's put it that way. Um, so you make sure you use your wombat skins for twitchy tights. And if you are able to poop like Shin Pai Chi, do it. But um, we want a lot more people to use that wombat skin. That's by the way still being still being sold in the drop. If you don't like the medal, you can always gift it to me. I'm trying to grow my MP. So every gift is appreciated. If you, I've been buying you, like them? You, can blend them, you can blend them four into one and into a 250 MP NFT. That's pretty it's pretty decent, I would say. Kamas asked something very interesting that I was wondering as well. When are we out of beta? That's up to you. Okay, so we can remain the same way as Solana, be over four years and say that we're still in beta. Or we could, I mean, we will think about it. 
Oh. What happened? Why is my face all over the place? Um, yeah, <laughs> that's up to you and it interrupts the mic. I, um, I didn't, re sometimes I don't realize that because I'm using a MacBook. I have a soft button for back. So uh, this just brought me back, right? And then I accidentally touched this. Um, sorry. So it's up to you when we get out of beta. Okay. We will so, think about it. There are uh, a lot of things to think about. Yes. You just need to think fast if you if you talk to these guys here in on the stream, right? We need some shower thoughts. As you said. It happens to me all the time. Because that's that's what's good, right? If you um that's what, what I also like about driving in the car alone, uh, because you get to think about things because there's nothing else you, you can do, right? You can, there's like, you have to obviously watch the road and you can listen to music or <laughs> podcasts right. or whatever, but there, you, you, your, your mind is fixed in the place where you are, right? And it's the same with showering. There's no, nowhere else you can do, nothing else you can do because obviously you can't watch a movie while showering. Right in the in the plane, it's different. If you're in a plane or in a train, you can actually watch movies, you can r r read a book, whatever. So um, it's not as meditative as as driving or showering, right? So that's why I have a lot of good ideas while um, while driving or while um, showering or well after after meditating actually, but. Um, even just going for a walk, right? And when you go for a walk, like I, at least I try and um, whatever, uh, make phone calls while I go for a walk, right? Or um, read something or whatever. So you, it's not it's not the same thing. So. Um, Do you guys shower with music? Do you shower with music, music Efren? No, no. no. I, I never bother because I also don't shower for very long, right? For me, it's like three to four minutes, then I'm done. It always depends on... And one song call. Um, hmm? What? That it will be half a song or one song at least. Yeah, 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 exactly. So um, it's I don't I don't mind. If I don't shower for like 20 minutes. <clears throat> I do shower pretty long periods of time. I shouldn't, I shouldn't do it because the planet and so on, but yeah. It's my guilty pleasure. As long as it's cold showers, it doesn't matter that much. <laughs> um, why aren't we playing to Twitchy Tights? I'd never play because um, I don't want anyone to think it's rigged if I win. So I yeah, never sure. participate in my own Twitchy Tight sessions. But as Matt and, and um, Pedro are, you feel free to play as well, Santiago. It's just that typically then I, I prefer when there's a massive giveaway if people actually win, if, if we actually win, because so that nobody can can ever tell us, um, hey, this rigged. I should play, and if I, I win, I double the prize and play again. Oh. I don't think I have my. I, I so, should play, and if he wins, he doubles the prizes. Yeah. First of all, I have I'm I'm logged in with the Wombat Gamers account, right? So it's. I would have to log it. I, mean, I can do that actually. I could the next time. I, I'll prepare for next time. I will have my black wombat. Um, can you show me the wombat in, in the wombat twitchy? Um, or yes. there isn't any. Um, let's briefly go here. Web is a turtle. I like that. Ah, so you mean you mean in here? So there's yeah. just one person who has it, the black one, at least, and that's uh, that's Pedro. This is what it what is it what looks like? That's the rare one that can poop. <laughs> so okay, let's get this rolling. So um, obviously Pedro will not get the extra um, wood medal, but the top twenty players of this round will get a wood medal. Okay, okay, let's go. Did somebody, old, old school Dota picks, did you really get the play um, wax name already? 
Oh, that was a really fast one. So where am I? Oh, I'm still alive. So Matt, uh, sorry, um, Pedro actually got killed while pooping. Too bad. Yikes. I'm still alive. Oh, never mind. Oh, Poppy and Stuck is here. Hey, man. So we got six more, five more, three, four, three, two, one, uh, two. Locked out and pop and stock. Wow. Not that it matters much, but GG's here. Nothing <laughs> So, congrats to Lucked Out, Pop and Stock, oh, Red Scorpion, Viriman, Five Minute Masters, Caesar, Veen, Rising Dragons, Canvas, Res Grizzlord, Gold, Matt, you too? You have to hand that out. I Rabbit did Larry, it. Penny Bags, Zuller, Ranman, Daddy Tobing, um, SDME, Incognito, and Mazbaz. So, top 20 players. Um, let me briefly post that and we'll run another one because uh we're in a mood um oh, we are sorry mood we are sorry and we're celebrating 20 seasons oh true that's why it's the top 20. it should be top 21. <laughs> In a second, my dog is going crazy. Yeah, he's he's probably seen all these fish. Um, so let's start right right away. Another one. So another exclamation mark wombat to join the second round. Same rules, same things. <sighs> Pedro, you again with your wombat. I want to see the pooping now. And, and show it to Pusin Chat. So, Rising Dragons. Um, if you run Twitch Tides nonstop for the next two hours, we may forgive you. Okay, if that's if it's as easy as that, just me spending another two hours running Twitch Tides. Um, that's. Um, that's cheap, actually. Um, yeah, I think I, like, I think I like that deal. Hmm? It's a good deal. It's a good deal, yeah. Um, Rising Dragons um, is asking why top 20 and not top 21. Because it's celebrating season 20, not season 21. Yes, I know. It's 21 seasons. Okay, so we're going to do it like that. This time around, <laughs> going to be the top 21 getting... Uh, Getting a wood medal, and we have Becky Valley who has joined with a with a black wombat. So you will get an extra. No matter no matter if you win or not, you you will get an extra wood medal. Forty players, we're at forty one. We were at fifty last round. So come on! Exclamation mark wombat, join this. So you. Um, so you so yeah, by the way, if you don't have a black one, but just any, you will also get your extra your extra medal. Um so join, join, join with it. Um we can we can can we can we reach those 50 that we had in the last round? Come on, guys. Have 98 people here. We need a, at least 50 fishes. Is that okay? Or are they twitches? Um, so season zero will never be counted. Well, it is counted. It's the 21st season, but it's, we're celebrating season 20. Adrian doesn't like season zero. I, I, you know, I was one of the OGs in season zero. I played it myself. Did you claim your OG patch? Of course. Okay. Did you claim yours? Uh, no. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> It's too um, exclusive for me. Yeah. It's, it's tough. So we're stuck at 42. 42 is not a bad number, though. Um, is it what? 
So now I'm thinking, shall, shall we wait until we may reach 50 or shall we just go with 42 because 42 is actually pretty damn great? Hmm. 42 is the answer to life. So yeah, we can go with 42. Okay. So half, half of the players will actually receive something. Top 21 players. Okay. Um, when beta turns to the beta. Let's go. And I want to see some pooping action from Bucky Valley and Chin Pai Chi. Oh, there we go. There we go. Oh, that was... So Pedro got really lucky with his, or good timing, let's put it that way, um, with the poop. So but does the poop does any damage or is it just to dodge? It's just to dodge. But it can catch other fish in there as well. Um, and it's, it's basic, it basically dodges all all enemies. Did I already die? Oh my god. That's so not is this, is this the moment that we had last week as well, where there's no enemies coming in anymore? No. I pressed, I pressed the button. It isn't, it isn't. I think it totally is, because I had said to... One. Yeah, that, that, because I pressed the button. Oh. But... Um, it was a there was a hack for this last time. Somebody somebody said how to fix that. Well, I, I was supposed to press something. E. No, e, yes, e, I know for for my enemies, but last time we there was uh, a, a different solution for that as well. Because so we're looking at this. Um, I don't know. So look, my light went off. Okay. This needs fixing. I can't be without enemies here. I'll set that down even. Or maybe oh that is a cool one. I haven't haven't seen that. Like Yoshi <laughs> Nobu. <laughs> I missed that. Dude. Uh, I will never get those. That that's a happy ocean bond. I don't know what yeah, is yeah, it. Yeah, it's just entirely unrealistic. You're enjoying <laughs> life. Oh, oh there, there we go. So, top 21, let's go. Lexi Lex, Kiyoshi Nobu, Serlison, Volcaria, Sol Kanar, Faunit, Terralins, Vintranix, Nadu, Soul of the Cat, Gods of Alera, Mortal Wombats, Webby, Thunder Westhausen. Mad is hacking. There's no way. Matt, Matt again? Okay, it's a one and two chance, so that's the only way Matt can actually win something. Pedro is also on there. Uh, Jeff going two and two. Uh, Grandman and picks. old school Dota picks. So top 21. Um, congrats and GG's to that really difficult round. Hey guys, can you maybe check the inventory issue if it is it is supposed to be fixed right now? So maybe can you check and give us real time feedback on it? Um, okay. All right. So that was two rounds of Twitchy Tides with a lot of NFTs. Okay, it seems it's working. That's good. Okay. Um, cool. So that is um, basically the end of the stream. So all that's left to do is ask the question of the questions. Who are we rating today? So, um, who do you want to? Who do you want to watch after after us? I mean, can get any better than 
Zuller, but um Quadril is around, the online name is also around. We have Quadrel, we have NFT dealer. Um he's left in time and <laughs> so up and running. Um Captain Atari Man, Valkyria, that is a cool I, I, I don't I've never heard anything of Captain Atari Man playing boss fighters. Be back soon. It's currently AFK, so maybe not the best choice for She's that sending. reason. Um but generally I, I always love um Ape or NFT dealer. Big info day on Ape stream for tides. So shall we go to and, and rate um Las Vegas Ape today? Um Can you see we're aware of it and I hope we can provide an answer and solution by today or tomorrow. Hopefully today. Broke back Brad. So well carry up. Maybe let's keep broke back Brad, I'll actually make that so hard to, to pronounce. Um, such a tongue breaker. Broke back Brad. <laughs> um, let's make let's keep that for next time. Um, and we'll do Las Vegas 8. Um, if there is like um, big info, whatever, and there's multiple people wanting this, um, wanting to watch Ape, then we'll do that and be back next week okay cool so enjoy the stream with Las Vegas Ape starting in two minutes that's um, probably good enough so thanks a lot everyone that was a busy stream a lot of questions um, hope you enjoyed it Santiago no, it was pretty fun and it, it is a pleasure to get to know you guys as you know my games are always open for suggestions, Mine feedback, aren't. ideas, and don't DM Adrian, he won't answer you. He never answered me. <laughs> um, that's true. Um, no special treatment here. Yeah, no special treatment. <laughs> um, yeah, so thanks for coming on. We should repeat that. You should be here all the time, every time. And um, you will have a larger portion of answered questions than me very, very sure. soon. All right, everyone, thanks a lot. Have a good rest of the week. And um, Santiago and, and the team will be in touch with you regarding how we actually deal with the lost time. So have fun and um, have a good week. Talk soon. Thank you, guys. See you around. Thank you. And